All right, so no air tags, no air power, no new iPhones, but everything else that was announced was kind of awesome. Because yes, Apple just announced a ton of new hardware at their Time Flies event, including iPads, watches, and more. We also got to see what the new A14 Bionic chip brings, and it's pretty impressive. And finally, just as a palate cleanser, we also got a sneak peek into what to expect for the Galaxy S21's camera, and even the price tag for the S20 FE. I'm Jaime Rivera, and if all works as planned, this would be pretty much our first show done in 4K at 18 by 9. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals, and don't worry, they're not all going to be about Apple, even if, of course, whenever products leave, the older ones will definitely be less expensive. Amazon currently has the Galaxy Note 20 for $200 off, meaning you can get the entry-level variant for $800 shipped in all color variants. Sadly, we have no deals on the Ultra right now. Not necessarily that we're gonna go crazy about that, but it is a great phone. And then the S20 is still $200 off, leaving it nearly at the same price as the Note 20. And since today is Apple Day, you can actually get the iPhone XR with a discount on Amazon, but there's a catch. You have to activate it on Cricut Wireless, but you get an entry-level 10R at $399. That's a pretty good steal, and Cricut's actually really good. And finally, the Galaxy Book S is $150 off, leaving the Intel Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD variant for $800. So yes, we've got more deals on Apple products, Samsung SSDs, and more in the links in the description. So yes, we've got a ton of Apple news today. Today is Apple Day, at least one of them. But don't worry, we're gonna start you off with something non-related, particularly with Samsung. The company just announced their new ISO cell lineup, which will be used in their upcoming devices. They include a 32 megapixel ISO cell JD1, a 48 megapixel ISO cell GM5, the 64 megapixel ISO cell GW3, and finally, the 108 megapixel ISO cell HM2, which will most likely make it to the S21, and which we covered a couple of weeks ago. It's apparently 15% smaller than its predecessor, and it brings Super PD, which is faster and more effective the face detection autofocus. It's capable of 9 in 1 pixel binning and doing 120 frames per second video at 4K. It'll also allow for 3x lossless zoom and it'll begin mass production in Q3. Now speaking of Q3, another product we're waiting for is the Galaxy S20 FE and we have a new leaked price tag from the Slovakian company. According to them, the S20 FE starts at 699 euros and remember, we're expecting this phone to bring a 6.5 inch display at 120 hertz, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865, 6 gigs of RAM, and 128 gigs of storage. We will keep you posted as we're definitely getting really close, and of course, the Galaxy S21 is coming soon. All right, let's move the spotlight over to Apple. The company had its September event today and they announced a ton of stuff, but probably one of the most interesting ones is how the company plans to hit the home because we're all working from home, or at least mostly, a lot of us are doing fitness from home. And so the company just pretty much decided to try to obliterate its fitness competition with Apple Fitness Plus. This is a service which they describe as a new, engaging, and personalized fitness experience that's capable thanks to your Apple Watch. Fitness Plus gives you different studio workouts like yoga, cycling, HIT, and more with Apple's new training team because yes, they even have trainers for this. It allows you to choose the workout on your iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV, and will automatically connect to your watch, showing you your metrics on both displays. So yeah, if you've seen how the Peloton digital app works, this is pretty much the same thing. Fitness Plus will be available later this year for $9.99 and it supports your entire family plan for the money. But wait, there's more. The rumors that Apple was going to consolidate all of its services into one just became true and it's called Apple One. This basically lets you pay a fixed rate for a bundle of services instead of paying separately. But not all bundles are created equal. There's three different tiers. The individual includes iCloud Storage, Apple Music, Apple Arcade, and Apple TV Plus for $14.95 a month. The family plan, which includes Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, Apple Arcade, and more iCloud Storage is then $19.95. And then finally, also their premium variant, which includes the same in addition to more iCloud Storage, Apple News, and Apple Fitness Plus for $29.95. Cool thing is you get a 30 day free trial and it'll be available in the fall. And guys, with absolutely everything else, we even have Spotify already posting about how much 
all these subscription services are going to affect the company, even if I don't necessarily feel that's the case, but we'll see. And all right, now let's talk about Apple Silicon. The company said that they were gonna take this serious and they were gonna bring a new breed of chips to come. And the company just started off today. We've been covering so many rumors of Apple's A14 Bionic, and today it pretty much became official and as powerful as we expected. This is major, as Apple has just announced their first ever five nanometer processor, and it'll debut on one of their newer iPads. And yes, I guess this will be the first five nanometer chip in the world as well. This architecture means that they were able to fit 11.8 billion transistors into this thing. It brings six CPU cores divided into four high efficiency cores and two high power cores. It has four GPU cores with a 30% increase in graphics performance, which theoretically means that any device powered by it will handle graphics nearly two times better than a standard laptop. We'd wonder which one though. It features a much faster neural engine with this 16 core architecture and takes up 11 trillion operations per second. To put it simple, this processor accounts for a 40% boost in CPU performance and again, 30% boost in graphics. According to Apple, it makes it easier to edit 4K videos, create art and play immersive games. At a time when Apple is making a full move into Apple Silicon, this is the first indication of absolutely everything that we saw at WWDC. See, obviously, now we need the products and we've got one on the show. Now let's let's move on over to the Apple Watch as, uh, well, Apple just made some significant moves in that direction and not just one device this time. First, they announced the new Apple Watch Series 6. It brings a new S6 processor, which is based on the A13 Bionic. It has 18 hours of battery life, theoretically, and Apple's new U1 chip for short range wireless location. It brings an enhanced always on display and new features like a blood oxygen sensor, in addition to a dedicated app and an altimeter. They also released the new Apple Watch SE for those of you looking for a more affordable solution. The Watch SE brings some of the Series 4 design with a display that's 30% larger than the Series 3. It brings an S5 chip, meaning you pretty much get really good performance. It brings some other features from the Series 6, like the gyroscope fall detection, of course, but there are some caveats. There's no always on display, no ECG and other features. Now, probably the coolest change is this new family set of feature, which basically lets you get an Apple Watch for your kids or other people that don't own an iPhone. It lets you use one iPhone to set the watch up and gives you health and safety features like location awareness for your kids and also fitness tracking in addition to an option for do not disturb whenever they are working on homework and stuff. The Apple Watch Series 6 will start at $399 with the SC starting at $279 and yes, even the Apple Watch Series 3 will still be available for $199. Oh, and did I mention that it doesn't bring a charging brick? Yeah, more on that in a bit. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with pretty much three things that were also mentioned to a certain degree. The first one is that for those of you that have been waiting for iOS 14, iPad OS 14, and Watch OS 7, it is available right now. Download it to your device. No word on Mac OS Big Sur just yet, and I assume tvOS is also included, but I haven't tested that one. And then the other one is that for those of you that wondered about the whole charging brick thing, the company pretty much just confirmed it. They're like, this is our new environmental push on to 2030 and these charging bricks are waste. Even if the Apple Watch Hermes, you know, the most expensive one, that one does include it, whatever. Point is, yeah, they pretty much confirmed no charging bricks, uh, but there are some products that include it. And then obviously it's iPad. Why iPad? Because it's 10 years of it right now. And uh, let's just say we got two very interesting models or should I say one? First off, they announced the new eighth generation iPad, but uh, well, it's the same 10.2 inch retina display iPad we got last year with the same design, but now powered by an A12 Bionic, which brings the neural engine to entry level iPads. It'll also start costing 329 bucks, just like the previous model, but only for 32 gigs, which even the Apple Watch Series 5 has that amount of storage. But let's move on to the most interesting upgrade, which would be the new iPad Air. Let's just say it's almost like the 2018 iPad Pro, but with some improvements 
improvements and caveats. It now brings an edge-to-edge 10.9-inch -edge liquid retina display, but sadly it doesn't feature Face ID. Apple moved Touch ID to the power button at the top to fit the new display, which makes you wonder if this is coming to the next iPhones. What's cool is that this is Apple's first device with the A14 Bionic, which we discussed earlier. Again, making it more powerful than standard laptops according to Cupertino and giving it a major performance boost. It brings a flat back with the same camera design of older iPad Pros. And speaking of the camera, 7 megapixel selfie shooter and the main shooter is 12 megapixels like the iPad Pro. It now brings USB-C and 20 watt power that actually does come in the box Again, such an irony. It'll be available as of tomorrow in five different colors starting at $5.99 and it'll support your usual accessories like the crazy expensive Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil 2. But yes, this was Apple September event. Pretty loaded on a lot of things that we were expecting, but none of the other things that we thought we'd get, like AirTags. Uh, like for example, iPhones, which apparently will not be coming until October, and obviously a few other things that we're expecting to come soon. Let us know in the comments down below, what are you most excited for? Because I'm not gonna lie, I'm definitely excited for Apple Watch Series 6. I've been an Apple Watch user for years, for a ton of reasons. I could totally make a video about that. But then the second thing is that iPad Air the, the new iPad Air, I guess. Honestly, for that A14 Bionic, I just want to see what that performance is like because it's this like weird hybrid in between iPad Pros. It's not as powerful. It doesn't have ProMotion, for example. But uh, in everything else, those are my two products and definitely Apple Fitness Plus. I'm really enticed to try it out because I do use Peloton services and Beachbody on iPhones. So this is a very interesting move that the company is doing, but that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. Follow me on my personal handles to see me try new things with Diego. He's doing the edits. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.